Okay, so what if I'm, uh, this is a question I, was, I received, um, something like if I'm living with someone, but there's a feeling I wanna be alone. And I totally relate to this question. What if I just wanna be blissed out in peace and stillness? and just this effortless joy, you know, just sort of a bliss out in happiness, or just have no distractions, no responsibilities, and just to be happy, and for nothing to disturb that happiness. I totally understand it. And then you've got whatever it is, it could be a parent, it could be a partner, it could be whatever is a dog or whatever it is. And, uh, and there's this just yearning just to be alone uh, in the house or maybe alone in the park and not to have that every day. So the thing to know is that um, I sort of see that if you're forced to, I mean, forced, I, I mean, uh, I think there's always choice, but <clears throat> if it seems like, you know, it's the right thing to do to stay with this person for whatever reason, you intuitively know, like, you know, I mean, I could leave, but I, you know, it's, it's not the right thing spiritually to do to leave this person right now. So I would like to be, have that love and joy of being alone, but it seems, almost seems like the universe grace is saying, no, until this is sorted out, you need to stay with this situation. So in those kind of situations, which I'm sure a lot of people are in, um, there's this feeling of wanting to be alone and not have that, that relationship or that burden to, to be there. One could just have it vanish away. Um, well, the first thing to know is aloneness. Um, there is nothing, I mean, alone, al what, what you're looking for is not aloneness. You're looking for peace and love and joy, infinite peace and love and joy that is undisturbed forever, eternally. Um, actually, Saint, I'll, I'll quote the St. Francis thing. One of St. Fran Francis's famous quotes is what, no, it's his prayer. It's in dying that one is born to eternal life. So what he's referring to is in the death of my ego, there's an eternal love, an eternal stillness, eternal peace, an eternal joy, an eternal light or an infinite light that goes on forever and ever and ever and is never disturbed at all, you know, for all eternity, which is, a long, <laughs> which is actually beyond time and beyond, uh, beyond uh, the ego, uh, which creates the uh, dualities time and separation and this and that and fear and me and you and conflict and all of that stuff. So I actually see if I'm in one of those situations, um, like I live with my father, I look after him, then I see it's not appropriate for me to say, you know, it just wouldn't be right uh, for many reasons to say like uh, I'm leaving. But, um, but then, you know, it doesn't, that doesn't block it. It just means there's a lot of spiritual work for me to have the, uh, what was called, it's not the aloneness state, it's the infinite peace and stillness and love, the unending joy state. You see, um, I would say, I would say a lot of, I mean, this is my view. I mean, a lot of relationships want to get into a relationship because they think they'll feel more peace and love and joy in a relationship. And a lot of people want to get out of a relationship because they think they'll feel more peace and love and joy. But actually, I would say it's irrelevant. Peace and love and joy are always present, no matter whether one is seemingly in a relationship or whether one is seemingly alone. It's not like one is better than the others, but you'd have to be like an enlightened, an enlightened person, shall we say. And an enlightened person isn't a person. They've transcended the person and the idea of separation. So that's what enlightenment means. There is no longer me and you. There is no longer time. There is no longer an absence of love in any situation, whether with or without people. So it's an infinite, the infinite presence of love and joy and stillness is there always and there's nothing in the world that can arise which blocks that love and peace and joy you know beyond time beyond me and you so that love and presence which we can call it uh, conscious contact with god uh divinity uh, uh the state of unconditional love because the ego is dissolved away that creates a special relationship between me and you so so then that busts the idea that, you know, that love and joy and peace and stillness forever can't be experienced in, a, in what's to the ego is a difficult relationship. The ego says this is a difficult relationship, I wanna get rid of it. But in truth, uh, if you get rid of the ego, infinite peace and love and joy is, in, is there as well. So it's not the get rid of the person or get a person, I would say, ultimately. 
even though one may find an ecstasy hit by letting a person go or getting a new person. But I wouldn't say that's the infinite pit that love and joy. That's um, more of a temporary ego, ego thing of like, this was a burden, now I'm out of it. I feel so happy or I feel so lonely. Let me get this person for a romantic relationship. And now I feel extreme joy for a few weeks, whatever it is. So those are, those are, those are, those are what I'd call um, transitory states. Yeah, transitory states. But if you like, if I let go of the transitory in myself uh, around being a, what seems to be alone or in relationship, then the the infinite presence is always here. On a practical note, and I forgot what, what even the question is. It was the question was, well, how to be alone in a relationship? Well, you know, I just need to transcend. Yeah, it's not really that you're asking. Really, in asking, how can I be in love and joy? What well, and and I would say in a relationship or out of a relationship. So that whether I, I, the people are around me or people are not around me, there's always the infinite presence here. So one can never be in loss or abandoned or, or experience grief because you know now one is with, if you like, with a love which will never abandon you. You know, you could say that the ego had created a projection of specialness that love was in a person, a special person. Um, so how do you do that? Let's get to practicals because that was, I don't know if that anything I said was practical. Well, it's a thing. So, okay, uh, let's say as a hypothetical, when I'm in the park or in a spiritual retreat, I feel blissed out and happy. But when I'm with my partner, it's like, it's really difficult going. So what do I need to do to have that love with me? Well, if that was the case, I mean, I do have an example. I live with my father. So if, if, I, um, if I get angry at my father, I'll see what the thoughts are that have, have now, instead of me feeling blissed out, now there's anger, the feeling of anger, and there are these thoughts like, uh, you know, I, I'd rather he hadn't said that thing because I wanted him to say something else. So I have these thoughts and this feeling with me. So really there's the feeling component which I can feel out or go to the observer with. Or, um, you know, if I go to the observer, okay, let's use the observer on the fear. Well, what's observing the fear? Okay, now I'm the observer. Oh, the observer is not in fear and that collapses the fear. Otherwise I could do, that's the observer for clearing the fear. If I had thoughts, okay, these thoughts are my thoughts. No, they're not. What's observing the thoughts? Is the observer of the thoughts interested in these thoughts? It's not. So the thoughts start to vanish. So you could use the observer to clear it and get back the infinite peace and stillness that is that is being desired, even though there's a relation a person in the house. That's one way. Number two, Dr. Hawkins' process of letting go. Okay, there's, there's like stress or frustration with dealing with this person in the household, but actually sit to sit and to just allow the feelings to be there and let go of the thoughts, the story around it. Just keep doing that until all the energy of frustration and fear or anger or guilt are released. Don't identify with the stories. And then you'll find that the thoughts won't come back because once the energy is released, it's like there's no resentment or fear or shame uh, and the thoughts won't, act, won't activate negatively because now one is in a high field of consciousness. So you could use the field feeling. You can use 12 steps, you know, if you're in a 12 step group, you know, just doing inventory and praying for fears and resentments to be removed. Um, until one is in, and the, you know, even if you let go of 100% of all your resentments and fears around a person with 12 step inventory and praying, the 12 step prayers from, from the big book, that would also mean you would no longer the desire to be alone would, would exist because you'd have that state. The presence of God would start to increase. Uh, what else to feel the aloneness? I mean, the thing with if there's baggage to be cleared and you leave, for me, the, and the it could be that the spiritual lesson wasn't learnt, and so the next person, or in some some other relationship, that same scenario may be plastered back in some form. Um, so, um, so I would, I mean, sometimes it is intuitively it's the right thing to leave, but sometimes intuitively, if I feel it's the right thing to stay, then I will clear any emotions and any negative thoughts until. So, it's, you know, of course, the miracles thing is make it meaningless. If I, you know, like when I see, like, here's the way I sort of talk about it. Like, if I see a man in the park, you know, just talking and doing things, either being happy or not being happy, I forget it within a split second. I mean, 
is meaningless to me. I mean, I don't mean that in a bad way. It means that my ego doesn't get hooked into what he's doing. I haven't got any history with that person. But if it's like my dad or if I had a girlfriend, which I don't, um, then I'm sure it would be much more invested with, oh, well, I was hoping this person would be different or I was hoping this person would be another way. So, you know, it's like, it's sticky. The thoughts and feelings come up in a much more sticky way than with someone who's there's no baggage with. So I just need to make the person who I've got baggage with, with no baggage. So I've got to make it so that, and then that will no longer block the state of, well, the question was aloneness, but actually the, you know, how can I have, really, I think the question is, how can I experience peace and love, whether there's a person in the house or not in the house? So that's just, that's transcendence. And how do I transcend that data? Well, it's to transcend my, how I'm perceiving my perceptions or resentments or fears or whatever you want to call it. And then that, that experience will do. So whether they're in the house or not, there's bliss and peace. And whatever they do or say, there's bliss and peace. So I'm going to stop there.